Halloween Night, Part 1, by Marshall Laidlaw. And then, I said, pulling out my necklace, it was in my mailbox. Somehow, my necklace had gotten from the bottom of the pond to my house. That's crazy, Kelly, Elizabeth exclaimed. Everything that's been going on in Hopersville has been just bonkers, Lynn reckoned, and she was right. Two weeks ago, a monster attacked Lynn and I when we went swimming at a pond. It had to be the most terrifying experience I've ever had. Whatever that thing in the pond was, it was horrific. It tried to kill Lynn, and I saved her. I wasn't fond of water before, and I definitely am not a fan now. Scary is not enough of a word to describe what I, what we, felt like. Now it was Halloween, the night of ghosts, ghouls, demons, and monsters. The three of us are at Lynn's house for a Halloween party, and I'm worried sick. So, now, what if the monster comes back? I worriedly fretted. It must somehow know where I live, so what if it comes back to get us? Lynn put her hand on my hand and looked at me reassuringly. Nothing's going to happen tonight, Kelly. I've been telling you that all week long, she promised. The monster is not coming back. I stood up and paced around Lynn's bedroom, where we were all seated. But what if it does? What would we... Calm down, Kelly, Elizabeth said as she stood up also. You can't let this fear you have win. You have to overcome it. How? I said blatantly. Bye, Lynn started. She looked out the window in a room that faces the woods behind her house. Her face lit up. By facing it! What? I trembled, my eyes going wide at the thought of what Lynn is proposing. Yes, Lynn continued. We should go back to the pond. Tonight. No, 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 I shouted. Yes, we should, Elizabeth piped in. Confronting your fears is the best way to get rid of them. This will be good for you, Kelly. But... Oh, come on, Lynn uttered. She grabbed me by the shoulders. You've been freaking out about this nonstop ever since it happened. I don't like seeing you like this. Aren't you scared too? I asked. Yeah, of course. I almost died. That thing almost killed me, but you need to see that we shouldn't fear it. I know if it were ever to come back, we can face it together. We beat it once. You need to see that. Well, I know that, but... I looked back and forth between my friends. There's no way I'm getting out of this, am I? Nope, Elizabeth chirped. I let out a big sigh. I really don't want to do this, but I have to. I guess we're doing this then, I said. Good, Lynn said. Let's sneak past my parents and get to the pond. What are we going to do once we're there? Elizabeth queried. I don't really know. We'll decide when we get there. Great, I exclaimed with a, with a groan. Oh, you'll be fine, Lynn assured. The night was dark and cold. That autumn weather was really settling in. September, and most of October, had been fairly warm. Now, though, the cold breeze made the hairs of my arms stand up. In other words, the perfect night for an adventure, right? I think it's over this way, Lynn asked us. Yeah, over to the left, Elizabeth responded. Lynn and Elizabeth had found the pond originally last summer. That feels l like a long time ago. I wish we could go back to that time. Summer's nice. It's the time when you don't have to have a care in the world. You don't have to worry about doing math homework or studying for your A-push test. Being a sophomore is hard. Summer's not. We're almost there, Lynn smirked to me. Yeah, I said. Through the trees, I could see a bit of the pond. It was the same as it was then. We stepped into the clearing, and there it was in its entirety, with dark trees surrounding it on all sides. The pond. The awful pond that had caused my mind so much dread these last few weeks. Well, Elizabeth said, here we are. It's not so bad, is it? No, I started. Was it so bad? I don't know. I, I was here. I... Never thought I'd ever stand before this pond again after what happened. How about we both dip our hand into, into the water, Lynn suggested. My whole body tensed up. I, 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 I can't. What, what if the monster won't attack us, Lynn claimed, as she looked into my eyes. It's hard for me, too. She sighed and knelt down on the shore. Lynn reached her hand out, 
herself took a deep breath and submerged her hand completely into the water. After a second, she smiled. See? It's fine. She took her hand out of the water and motioned towards me. Now it's your turn, girl. I took a step. A small step, but still a step. Closer to the pond. I told myself that it was going to be fine, but did I really believe that? Maybe. If anything happened, my friends would be there for me. They'd save me. I took another step, and then another. Lynn patted me on the back, and Elizabeth smiled behind me. I knelt down. I hovered my hand above the water. I can do this. I can beat the fear, I thought. And, just as I was about to do it, I heard a rustling coming from behind me, on the other side of the pond. I looked up and saw a small figure in the distance. He or she was masked by the trees, but a person was definitely there. Guys, I whispered, and pointed up to the figure's location. Oh no. Um, uh, Elizabeth yelped. Get back into the trees. We all sprinted softly back up to the trees. My heart audibly beat in my chest with fear and uncertainty. We huddled down in the brush and peered at the scene ahead of us. The figure came closer. It was definitely a woman. She was black, and she wore a long black and white dress with an intricate pattern of jewels stitched onto it. She sat down on the small shore of the pond. Her hair was black, long, and loose, coming down on her back a little below her shoulders. She put her hand on the water and began to speak, breaking the thick silence of the night. Her voice was soft and quiet, but also a little eerie in its calmness. Well, Peter, the woman whispered, it's our night. She paused, chuckled before continuing on. How long has it been now? Too many years to even begin to count, certainly. I just wish. Again, she paused and gazed straight down on the pond. It was like she was remembering something. I would know. Long memories come flashing back to me all the time, causing me to space out. The woman continued after a while. I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry, Peter. I want you to come home. After she said that, something in the middle of the pond stood awake. A trail of blood formed on the water's surface and a gnarled, scaly hand popped into view. My mouth fell wide open, and so did Lynn and Elizabeth's. The, I whispered, while accidentally moving my foot a little, crackling the leaves beneath me. Lynn's hand slapped over my mouth. The woman stood up swiftly and looked up directly in our direction. Her blue eyes narrowed and stared down at us. The hand collapsed back into the water. No! yelled the woman. She looked up again. Her blue eyes turned red. Suddenly, a cloud of thick red smoke erupted around her. It cleared quickly. The woman was gone and replaced by a small raven. It flew away above the trees. Follow that bird! I screamed out of nowhere! We got up out of our hiding spot and did just that.